Hi everyone and welcome to Revised Chemistry with Mr B. In this video we're going to be taking a look at isotopes. Make sure you stay around to the end of the video because I'm going to be showing you a typical exam question and explaining how you can get maximum marks on it. The best way to understand isotopes is to take a look at an example. And here we have three isotopes of carbon. So the different forms of the same element. We're talking about carbon in each case. And we're going to look at how many subatomic particles each one has. By that we mean the number of protons, electrons and neutrons. So first of all, we can see from the atomic number that each of these types of carbon have six protons. If you can't remember how to work out the number of protons, electrons and neutrons, I'll put a link up here now to one of my previous videos as a reminder. So back to this example, we can also see there are six electrons for each type of carbon. Now, when we look at the number of neutrons, we do the mass number, take away the atomic number. So the first type of carbon has six neutrons. The second type has seven and the third type of carbon has eight neutrons. So we can see from this that they've got the same number of protons and electrons, but the different forms of carbon have different numbers of neutrons. That leads on quite nicely to our definition of an isotope. Isotopes are different forms of the same element that have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. Make sure you learn this because it will be a two mark question on your exam. We'll look at one more example of isotopes before we get onto that all important exam question. So this time we've got isotopes of hydrogen and we can see from the atomic number that each isotope of hydrogen has one proton. Each has one electron. But we can see the first isotope of hydrogen has no neutrons. The second one has one neutron and the third type of hydrogen has two neutrons. So this fits in with our definition of an isotope. We can see it's different forms of the same element. They're all hydrogen. They've got the same number of protons. They've each got one, but they've got different numbers of neutrons. So here's a typical exam question that I've seen many times, both as a teacher and an examiner, and I'll work through it with you so you can see what you need to write to get maximum marks. So the question could be, compare these two isotopes of chlorine and refer to their subatomic particles in your answer. And then we've got two boxes with information in about the two isotopes of chlorine. Now the key words here are subatomic particles, protons, electrons, and neutrons. So before we even get into answering the question, we're going to write those underneath each type of chlorine. So each type of chlorine has 17 protons. Each isotope has 17 electrons. And when we do the mass number minus the atomic number, we find that the first type of chlorine, which we call chlorine 35, has 18 neutrons. Whereas the second type, which we call chlorine 37, has 20 neutrons. Now, we've not got into answering the question yet, but by writing that information out, it makes answering the question much, much easier. So I strongly recommend that's how you go about these questions. So in your answer, you would then write about each of the three types of particle to get the three marks. So the first mark would be for saying, they both have the same number of protons, which is 17. Actually say how many they've got. Second mark for saying they both have the same number of electrons, which is also 17. However, they have different numbers of neutrons. One type of chlorine has 18 neutrons and the other has 20. So you can see for the three marks, we've spoken about protons, electrons and neutrons. If you found this video useful, please remember to like it and subscribe to my channel, Revised Chemistry with Mr. B. Thank you for watching.